Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. Arnie Diesel here. And if you've got a 1994 to 1997 7.3 power stroke like I've got, these things didn't come from the factory with intercoolers. And one of the things you can do if, and whenever you're starting to get to high performance, when you start adding in more fuel, you need to control exhaust gas temperature. So you'll use an intercooler. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to explain to you guys a bit more how an intercooler works. Also give you some considerations as to whether or not you should install one on your truck or not. Also, the channel finally just passed 100 subscribers. Thank you guys all so much for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Hope you guys are enjoying all the videos and hope you all enjoy this one as well. All right, guys, to give you a basic rundown of what all we're talking about here today, I'm basically going to cover what is an intercooler, talk about what it is, what it does, and also going to talk about how you can use an intercooler to get more power to your rear wheels and to protect your engine all the while and keep everything safe. Now we're also going to be talking about whether or not you need one, when you would need to install an intercooler if you're really pushing for high performance, and also along the way I'm going to try to explain, use some mathematical explanations of how the intercooler works and try to give you guys an idea as to how hot the intake temperature of all this is. But first off, let's get to the basics of what the intercooler is and why you need it. To put things simply, an intercooler you can think of as basically just being a heat exchanger. Whenever you have, say, a turbocharge application or a supercharger, whenever that air is compressed, it ends up getting really hot. Now, we know that having hotter air is not as dense as cold air. That's principle how hot air balloons work. And for our engines and making most power, we want to have the most air that we can possibly get in. So an intercooler, what it does, it takes your hot compressed air from your turbocharger or your supercharger, and it exchanges it through the intercooler and it actually uses the oncoming air that passes through your engine to cool it off. Basically it's just a radiator for your air to put it simply. But this allows you to have cooler air that comes out, increase the density of the air, and in turn make more power. Now on average I found that for every 6 degrees Fahrenheit that you reduce the intake charge you can theoretically at least theoretically increase the density of your air by 1%. And all else being equal, you can then increase power output then by at least that same percentage. Of course, that's not accounting for other losses and things of that sort. Now, guys, intercoolers are nothing new. They've actually been around for quite a long time. Porsche start, first started using them back in the 1970s, and pretty much every modern turbo diesel has them. They first came out really in the light diesel truck world back in 1989 with the Dodge Ram 5.9 Cummins, and since then. The Ford Power 73 Power Stroke got the intercooler back in 1999, and the Duramax lines always had intercoolers. But the main reason why we want to have these in modern diesel applications is largely for emissions and power. Since pretty much every modern diesel here today has an intercooler, I'll explain a bit more about why they would have them. Well, the main thing these days has to do with emissions. Go figure, it is an emissions control device. Well, one of the main issues with our diesel engines is they produce what are called NOx. These are nitrous oxide emissions, where that X can be a number, and, you know, one, two, and that just is basically a variant of nitrous oc nitric oxide. Now, this is not nitrous, guys. It's not the same stuff that you use to inject to get more power. It's not at all the same. This is the pollutant. What it does is it combines with water in the atmosphere, and then it actually forms nitric acid. That's where we get acid rain, and so it's a serious problem and it's in good nature that we would want to reduce these NOx emissions. The way we do that is that these intercoolers reduce the peak engine temperature from combustion because higher combustion temperatures lead to more of these NOx emissions. By reducing the intake temperature charge we can in effect reduce the peak cylinder temperature and reduce our NOx emissions. Now certainly if you guys are looking at a lot of high performance you understand that exhaust gas temperatures have are basically your red line you don't want to get too hot with the exhaust gas temperature because that can really destroy your engine it puts a lot of heat on components and that completely destroys the longevity and life of them. So modern diesels have these intercoolers to reduce the, temperature, the peak temperature inside their cylinders and that allows them to have longer engine lives and in turn you can ingest a higher density fuel or higher density air and you can in turn make more power and that's always good. Now folks, to really see the benefit as to why in the world we would need an intercooler, we got to figure out really how hot the intake charge is. Now what I'm using is I'm using this formula right here. This assumes something called isentropic compression. If you guys are interested in learning about this stuff, I'm going to see if I can make another video explaining this whole process of what I'm using, how I can use this to approximate basically the temperature change from pressure. This is the theory behind how diesel engines work, so it's really interesting. But I figure most folks don't really want to look at the crazy math. 
Now, if you guys really are interested in that, I encourage you to check out that video that I'm going to put out there for you. It's I'm going to try to explain it in a way that makes sense. But in other words, um, I ran went ahead and ran through some calculations here real quick. So with my truck, I found out that I run about 16 psi with stock the with a stock TP38 turbocharger and with stock tuning on my 97 F350. Now I'm going to assume that the intake temperature reasonably is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in some applications, if it gets really hot, then certainly the temperature is going to be even higher. So I, after plugging in the, the information that I have into this formula, bearing in mind that this formula assumes an idealized condition where it doesn't account for frictional losses and heat generation from that, and it doesn't account for heat transfer, this is as ideal as it gets, it calculates that the Temperature coming out of the turbocharger at 16 psi of boost is approximately 218 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's hotter than boiling water. And that's certainly a lot hotter than the ambient air temperature. So you can definitely get the idea that we can significantly increase the air density and reduce the temperature by having an intercooler. All right, so now that we've covered a bit more about how much an intercooler can really help you out and about how hot the temperatures really are from your turbocharger, I want to talk to you guys about intercoolers and whether or not you should install one or not. And ultimately, that'll, of course, be up to you. But realistically, guys, intercoolers are, of course, a double-edged sword. On one hand, they reduce your exhaust gas temperatures, and so that'll definitely help with your I guess, engine longevity and things of that sort, especially if you're putting in aggressive tuning. I've heard in some situations they can reduce the exhaust gas temperatures by 150, 200 degrees at most in some situations. More, in, in some cases, maybe more depending on what other modifications you have. Now, they also lower your emissions, of course, reduce NOS emissions, so if you care about the environment like most of us should, then that's definitely a good thing. And also, if you run increased, you, with custom tuning on the with the intercooler, you can really optimize the performance of it. Now, when you're taking in essentially more oxygen and you have a greater volume of air to absorb that heat, it allows you to run increased timing advance and also dump in more fuel, which in turn can increase more power and allow you to essentially maintain the same exhaust gas temperatures you would have otherwise. Now, folks, on the downside, this intercooler will actually increase your turbo lag, and certainly if you've got an old 7.3 that's not intercooled, such as the old body style like I've got, these things are kind of really bad when it comes to turbo lag. They it, it takes quite a while for that turbo to spin, and intercooler, especially in stock application, is really only going to make it worse. So if you've got a stock truck, unless you're going for absolute complete longevity of the vehicle and fuel economy, and then it's just only going to increase turbo lag, and you, really there is no point in installing an intercooler. The other downside is that these intercoolers also take up space, and so it definitely makes it harder to work on everything. It basically goes in front of your radiator and, and all of that, or depending on your setup. Well, guys, that pretty much does it for this video here today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave that down in the comment box. But I hope you all enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. And if you like watching videos similar to this, you like if you, you're enthused about old diesel trucks and things of that sort like I am, be sure you click that subscribe button. I try to post videos as they come up. Meantime, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and you all have a good one.